Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at Redcore Linux Orion 2101. The easiest way to explain this distro is what Manjaro is to Arch, Redcore is to Gentoo. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And at the end of the day, if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel, those links are in the description down below. Redcore Linux, Orion. I will leave a link down below for their website, and you can go check them out. First thing we're going to do is we're going to zip on over to their website. And when you open up Firefox, it automatically loads up the Gen 2 Linux page. Basically gives you information about Gen 2 Linux, additional stage downloads, Gen 2 free node channels, and then some developer bugs, security advisory, fresh documentation, new packages. I went ahead and preloaded Redcore's web page, which is redcordlinux.org. You scroll down a little bit, and DT did a review on it way back at 1806. Today we're doing 2101. Basically says Redcore Linux is a distribution based on Gen 2 Linux, stable and some unstable, and a continuation of the now defunct what looks to be Kogeon Linux. Kogeon Linux itself was a distribution based initially on Savion Linux and later on Gen 2 Linux, and it was developed by Rogent OS Development Group since 2011. Yinhan Mamut himself joined Rogent OS Development Group in January 2014. However, after more than five years of development, Rogent OS Development Group decided to discontinue Kogeon Linux in November 2016, and so Redcore Linux was born. Redcore Linux shares the same idea as its defunct ancestor. It aims to be a very quick way to install a pure Gen 2 Linux system without spending hours or days of compiling source code. And Redcore Linux targets casual laptop, desktop users, and to some extent, workstation power users. Redcore Linux is built from Gen 2 Linux Stage 3. They then add the kernel, a bootloader, and a few other things like DBus, INIT system, so they can have Redcore Linux, a Gen 2 Linux Stage 4, if you will. Deploying this Stage 4 will give you a very basic console, only bootable Gen 2 Linux system. And what Redcore does is they put a DE, a desktop environment, on top of it. And then you can kind of move around and experience Gen 2. I hear a lot of time people would like to try Arch, so I point them in Manjaro's direction. That way they don't have to compile and spend days to get it together or get it working. That way they can get a real quick look at it and see if it's something they might want to get into. Redcore's doing the same thing for Gen 2. On their webpage, you've got home, you've got news, you've got download, you've got contact bugs get the wiki or donate to the development team so what we're going to do right now is just go ahead and close out of this and that brings us to the desktop if you download redcore throw it on a usb or put it into a virtual machine this is pretty much the desktop you're going to be met with it's a very beautiful desktop wallpaper as you can see it is in kde what i am going to do real quick is go ahead and let's make this panel a little bigger so it's easier to see so we'll go ahead and bump that up. Go ahead and click and close. First thing I want to do is what kind of wallpapers do we have to choose from? And I do like the icon set they have chose for this distribution. It's a round icon set. A little bit smaller than your usual icons, but I do like it. And what you can see is you have the standard KDE type wallpapers. You only get one wallpaper for red core. So we're going to go ahead and leave that there. If you come down to the bottom, you have one panel. You've got date and time right here, and then you've got your hidden icons, notifications, updates, clipboard, night color control, keyboard indicator, Bluetooth, and then vaults. What's really nice about vaults is you can actually create encrypted areas to save data on your PC or laptop. You go in, you create a vault, you can put certain documents in there, and those documents or files will be encrypted. So we'll go ahead and close back out of that. You've got networks, you've got USB, you've got battery power, and then of course you've got your sound. And if we right click on the bar where I just edited it, you got more options to your right. You can do the panel alignment, left, center, right, visibility. You can set it up to auto hide if you want. Windows can cover it, Windows can go below it. And then of course the opacity, you can make it adaptive, opaque, or translucent. 
And then over here, you can always add widgets if you choose. Widgets are pretty easy to use. If you watched any of my KDE videos, I go through it. But you can go like weather report, just drag, drop. Then you can configure it. Then you can choose. You go down here and you can just say NOAA. Go in and type in whatever city you want it to pull from. I'm just going to go Dallas Love Field and apply. Then we can close out of that. And as you can see, you've got Dallas Love Field over here. If that's a widget you want, that's an easy way to have it right there on your desktop. If you're not into widgets, then maybe you just don't want them. You can just come down here and click on remove and it's gone. So you kind of get an idea of what the widgets do. Down on the bottom, you've got system settings, discover software center, Dolphin file manager, and then of course Firefox where we were just at. Let's go ahead and take a look at Dolphin file manager. And you open it up, and I really like the look of it. I do like the color of the icons. Over here on your left, you got your usual suspects. Now, if there's anything over here that you don't want to be shown, like your recents, maybe you don't want recents, just right-click on it, hide it, search for, you can hide it as well. And then if you want to make these a little bigger, easier to see, all you got to do is come down to this open area down here, right-click. Icon size are on small. You can go medium, large, or huge. I'm going to go ahead and go large. And then that way it makes it a little bigger so you can see it. One of the things I do like about Dolphin, if you've got to do some file movement or things you want to readjust, you can always go into split mode and you could like open up music. And if you've got things in here you want to move to a different folder, you can just highlight, drag those over, and drop them. It makes things a little bit easier. It's just a nice, clean, crisp file manager that makes doing your work easy and stays out of your way. So let's close out of that. So we're going to come over here to the Discover Software Center. And this is where you would come to install any software or applications you would want on your system. Let's just click on Applications, Accessibility, Developer. So you've got some choices. Application Add-ons, Discover Editor, Genome, K3AB Themes, Console, Pages, Cases, Guard. So... You can see what we got down here. You can just search through and find out what you want to install. And then over here, you can always click on installed and it will show you the information about what you have installed on this system. And then we'll go to settings. And right here, it looks like it has flat packs enabled out of the box. Firmware updates are gonna come from Linux vendor firmware service, LVFS. So that makes everything pretty simple for installing applications. Then you've got system settings. You can come over to system settings. You can make several adjustments over here. Appearance right off the bat. looks like we're running Breeze. You could go to Breeze Dark. But one thing I have noticed is let's change it over to Dark. Apply. Okay. If you have noticed, there is no application icon. It's there, but it's the same color as the bar. And you can only see it when you hover over it. Now, if that's something that would bother you, just right click on it. Configure application menu, go to icon, click choose. I'm just going to go with something that's easy, something like this right here. I'll just do that. Apply, click OK, and now I've got an icon back down here. So, But that's how you change your global themes. If for some reason you don't like any of these themes, just come down, get new global themes, click on it, and you can look at several different themes and download them. Then you've got application style, plasma style, colors, window decorations, icons, cursors, font management, splash screen. Then you've got workspace behavior, window management, search, notifications, online accounts, display and monitor, input devices, power management, and then system information. If you come over here, it says you're on KDE Plasma 5.21.5, QT version 5.15, kernel version, you're on 5.11.22. I do believe at present we're at 5.14, so this is a couple generations back, but I'm sure with the next update, that'll be taken care of, and they'll move it to an updated kernel. I do know this. When I put it on a live USB and ran it in an older HP laptop, everything seemed to be recognized right off the bat. Mouse, touchpad, keyboard, so you're pretty safe there. So let's close out of that. Now we're going to come over here. Let's open up our applications menu. And in development, you've got QT Designer, Education. You've got Mathematics and Science, Games. You've got Lutris and Steam installed out of the box, which if you like playing games or you're a gamer, that comes in handy. Or if you're just a casual gamer, 
that comes in handy. Those are already installed. You don't have to worry about it. Graphics, you've got FontForge, you've got GIMP, you've got GwynView, you've got LibreOffice Draw, you've got Ocular if you want to use it to edit PDFs. Internet, you've got Conversation, you've got Mozilla Firefox on Wayland, Mozilla Firefox on X11, and Mozilla Firefox. So depending on whatever you're using, whether it be Wayland or X11, you're covered there. Same thing with Thunderbird. It gives you that option right out of the box. So whatever you might choose, you've got those applications that are ready for that. You've got Qubit Torrent, and you're showing Steam Multimedia. K3B, you've got MPV Media Player, Phonon Audio and Video, VLC Media Player, Office. You've got the LibreOffice Suite. Let's find out which version of that we have. Okay, it is opened up. Let's go up to Help. Let's look at About LibreOffice. It's got version 7.1.3.2, which is a pretty up-to-date version, and it comes from the Gen 2 official package. If you use LibreOffice and you want to give Redcore a try, it's already installed, and it's a good up-to-date version of the software. So let's go back down to settings. you got system settings, then you've got system. Let's see what kind of resources we have. First thing I want to check out is if they've got HTOP installed out of the box. So we will go HTOP, and they do have HTOP installed. I have issued this machine three gigabytes of RAM, and it's got four CPUs. At present, the CPU is running at under 2%, and it's using 1.08 gigs of the three gigs I have assigned at rest, which is pretty decent. Generally, Manjaro runs for me about eight or 900, but that's give or take. So, I mean, even at one gig, that's still pretty light. It's not XFCE light, but if you like the KDE desktop environment and you want to give Red Core a shot, this is definitely going to work on a lighter weight machine. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go back down. You've got utilities, you've got ARC, KFine, KWrite, and then, of course, Power Session on, off, or close. That, my friends, is Red Core Orion 2101 based on Gen 2. If you're somebody that has been interested in looking at Gentoo but didn't want to take the time to compile it and do everything necessary to get it up on a machine and take a look at it, Redcore is definitely the way to go for you. I've been really impressed. It's quick, it's snappy, and quite honestly, I've wanted to take a look at Gentoo, and I just really haven't had the time or the inclination to take the time to try it out. I suggest you run on over to their website, which I will put a link in the description down below. Download it, throw it on a USB, or put it in a virtual box and run it through your paces and see what you think about it. Do me a favor before you go today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. doesn't cost anything, and at the end of the day, if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or become an all-excess sponsor like Misloff Kraleza and Mitchell Valentino, zip on over to Patreon. Become a patron to the channel. Those links are down below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.